Oh, is that what the seahorse looks like? Oh, wow. The target is facing the wrong direction. No target selected. <gasps> he destroyed the ship! Oh my god, that was epic. Today we're going to be discussing Tryon's recent announcement of acquisition by the game publisher Gameago, uh, whose history of player abuse and shady monetization strategies are but faint whispers to those who are close enough to care. I will be talking about my personal history with Tryon, my involvement with the creators program, as well as my opinion of how I think we ain't got to this point. My intentions are not to offend anyone, still tied to Arcage and Tryon. I just feel as though with the amount of time I've given to this game and how the community built me and my Twitch channel up, giving me the launch I needed to get to where I am now, I owe it to the community to voice what I consider truthful opinions I had to face when deciding to walk away from everything. These are my opinions and mine alone, and I cannot attest uh, to other people's viewpoints and experiences. I hope at the very least you learned something new, so without further ado, let's get into it. So here's some personal history that will help you understand why this game, out of all the others, meant so much to me over the past four years. When Arc Age had launched, it was right before I hit the lowest point in my life, and I'm not exaggerating in the least bit. My father had recently passed, I was in the house with my family, and I was also forced to make one of the biggest decisions I had to make at the time, which led me to packing up all my things and moving with my wife and kids to New York, rooming with an in-law for a year. I was starting completely over from scratch, and the only thing I had to look forward to, other than the long days job searching in a suit going door to door, was Arcage. I know I'm spilling my entire life story here, but it all relates to how I view Arcage and how special it means to me. Before what I could consider the dark days, I had purchased an alpha package, which was $150, $150 for the Founders Pack. At that time, $150 was unheard of, and there was a lot of hype surrounding the game at the time. Looking back at it now, I'm happy. I did so because if I didn't, I would have never seen what Arcage could have been. For those of you lucky to experience it, pre-patch 1.0 was bliss. Submarines could go faster than clippers. You were able to carry packs on your back while on subs. Uh, naval battles was amazing. You could expand your inventory with in-game gold and the crafting system wasn't bad at all. Basically, it was an open world game not close to being a sandbox. Then 1.0 dropped. 1.0 patch in the alpha server. Uh, this was the beginning of many, many more poor decisions that we will see from XL Games that eventually led to where we are now. I say XL Games because I don't really blame Tryon here. Tryon was at the most a localization team um, from what I could tell. A team that integrated the game to the western market and did the best they could to not only localize but also petition for a better working western system. Which leads us to the core gameplay. Arc Age was amazing and also bred very unique community interactions that you would probably see from games akin to EVE Online where you had intel gathering, peace negotiations, strategic battles, the claim Friedrich, and unique naval encounters over trade ship lane. Not seen in any other MMO out at the time, this game at its core was the best MMO ever to come out, and that's not an understatement. Couple all this with castle siege mechanics, reminiscent of lineage, and you have to wonder why the mass exodus from the game. In the heyday of Arc Age, Order of Goddess, the guild I ran, had seen membership numbers exceeding 300 plus. And I was fortunate enough to go on some amazing excursions with the group I had led, leading to some hilarious encounters and lots of fun. However, as the months passed by, more and more patches were released that made it more and more pay to win. To compete with the top geared swipe to win players, the game started to see more and more players bow out as the grind to get gear became even worse each patch. And it wasn't until 2018 that the company decided to change the gear system, but by then it was too late. The game now at this point was hemorrhaging whales. Players who spent massive amounts of time and money in the game were now leaving for other games in greener pastures. Now we have a game that pales in the comparison to its former self. Multiple servers have been merged down to just two legacy servers, and there is a thread of community still hanging on to this day. When asked what will you do when the servers are given over to Gamingo, many were optimistic. But what I found even more shocking is that the remaining players had no intention of leaving. 
no matter how bad it gets, it seems like they're okay with shelling out more money. By this time, fresh start servers were a thing, starting over and rebuying items and mounts, which in my opinion was just amazing. How much they could just restart, refresh, and ask the players to rebuy everything they worked already so hard to obtain. Looking at the recent posts uh, by Gamigo, it seems they're under the impression that they will get a huge financial boost off the backs of players across the few games Tryon owns. And here's where I have to stop and think, who is Gamigo? I remember playing a long time ago a game from Gamigo, uh, I believe it was Fiesta, as well as a shooter game um, that was really unknown. I didn't stick around too much because of how poorly the games were managed, and I'm really not sure if this company is going to do the necessary things that they need to do to bring bring the players back to Arcage and make the game playable again. I think, however, what they're going to do is just double down on the already shameful tactics of monetization in this game. Only time will tell, however, what Gamigo or Gamigo will do with this IP, how they will improve on it, and if they have what it takes to bring back players like me who have already walked away from the game back. I would love to see how the company handles transferring other players' houses, items, money, in-game and out. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion, however, it will go down much like Dragon Nest did when they transferred. Uh, most of their members, they only transferred what was on the character, and that was it. Basically you, basically, you didn't get to bring anything other than what was on you. Again, only time will tell. But I'll leave you with this. This is a paragraph directly from the Game Ago site speaking about their recent acquisition of Tryon. Through the acquisition of Tryon, Gamigo's management expects additional revenues of over USD 18 million and an additional EBITDA of USD 1 to 4 million for 2019. This estimate depends on the success of the reconstructuring and integration of Tryon and it's mainly based on potential econom economies of scale and synergy. The exploitation of economies of scale and synergy is an elementary part of the Gamigo strategy and has been proven several times in acquisitions in the past. This is on the recent report that's posted on the website uh, regarding the recent acquisition of Tryon. And I will link, a, I will leave a link to this exact article that they posted in the description down below. But that's it for me today, guys. Uh, if you liked the video, make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. I'd love your feedback and I will see you guys in the next video.